Hey guys, this is Vernier for CardRunners.com, and I'm bringing you the next episode of Building Good Poker Study Habits, 10 Steps to More Mindful Poker. And today is the ninth step, where we analyze five or more hands where you play the Turner River heads up out of position in a single raised pots with initiative. So that's uh, a handful, but let's look at what that entails. So here are the hold a manager filters that you should look at. So PFR is true, which means that you have initiative. And did three bet is false, which means those two together are going to create a single raised pot um, uh, where you have initiative. Face preflop three bet, uh, that should actually be false. Sorry, I'm going to fix that. So face preflop three bet is false because you want to be the one that has initiative. Last act on flop is false. You're gonna be playing those out of position. Players on flop is two. You are going to be playing it heads up and saw turn is true and saw river is true as well. So when we bring that up, here is my hold and manager filter and I'm just going to go from uh, latest to earliest. All right, so here's hand number one. I'm going to take a look at it and critique any uh, individual street. So preflop, this is uh, this is okay. Raising uh, pseudo one gapper from the cutoff. I flop two pair on a drivey board. Uh, this is a spot where I'm going to be playing it quite fast on this kind of a board. So he calls the turn is a blank unless he has four or six. And I'm going to continue being aggressive here because I think this is a spot where he's going to have a lot of one pair type hands like uh, nines or tens or uh, like seven X or queen X is very likely. So I'm going to bet again and he calls again and the river's just about the worst card in the deck for me. It, um, if he has queens, uh, if he has a queen, he has trips now. Uh, if he has a hand like uh, 7x or 8s through jacks, he's going to uh, most likely call another bet. Uh, if he has... Um, you can also have a missed draw, which he might end up betting here. But I see no value in betting here. And my only decision is if I check any of you bets, uh, do I check call or do I check fold? And I think I'm just going to check fold on this. So I check and he checks behind and he has pocket eights. So I think preflop is fine, flop is fine, turn is fine. Rivers when my decision comes in. Do I check fold or do I uh, check call? And like I said, I, I think I would check fold in this situation. I think there's going to be too many made hands that he's going to have uh, and just not enough draws. So 6-8 um, misses if he had like 6-8 of... Uh, spades, uh, obviously six eight of hearts. I think he's just going to raise on the flop. So th the question is, does he have enough uh, made hands that he would then choose to bet? Like, would he bet eights there? Uh, and I don't know. Pocket jacks. Uh, we're just going from earliest to latest. Against the short stack, I raise jacks. It's fairly straightforward. Drive a flop. I bet quite big, uh, hoping to get it all on the flop. He calls, turn is a blank, and I'm just going to... I play this hand very fast against a short stack on a drivey board. So he ends up calling with a, uh open-ender, and I end up holding. So fairly straightforward. Uh, here I didn't end up playing the river, but that's fine. Ace-queen... I raise preflop, he calls, I c-bet this, um, I'm okay c-betting this, uh, just because I might take it down if he has some kind of broadways himself, like an ace-jack, or a king-queen, or whatever, and I can turn, uh, I, I do have a draw to six silver cards, which I think are going to be good for me. That said, uh, he calls. When he calls, I'm going to take a lot of hands out of his range that 
hands like ace jack, queen jack, etc. And I'm going to put a lot more hands like pocket eights, uh, six five, six seven. Uh, give him a lot more of those. So I check, and he bets five. And I don't know what it means, but I only need eighteen percent equity here. Um, so so I'm going to bring up uh, Pro Poker Tools and take a look at. I'm getting uh, I'm getting really good odds to continue on the turn here. So something like uh, almost five to one. And this is a bet that the villain could be making with just a hand like, um, you know, f- five, six, pocket eights, pocket sevens. So I'm going to just take a look at uh, what what my equity would be uh, in this situation. And I guess I'll include like sixes, fives, uh, fours. Um, I can see that. Uh, th- threes and twos. And so that's going to be, that's going to be the villain's hand. Uh, my hand is going to be ace queen offsuit. So there it is. And, uh, the board is something like, I think six of spades, uh, three of hearts, uh, two of diamonds, uh, 10 of spades. So against that range, I, I do pretty poorly uh, because some of that range includes sets as well. So I think in general, uh, this is, um, it, it's, it's going to be close, but uh, I don't, I don't mind a fold. Uh, if I take out uh, some of the sets, then let's take a look at what my uh, equity uh, would be here. So even if I take out uh, some of the sets, I still don't have the right equity to continue here. Uh, at the time, I thought I did, so I ended up calling. Uh, but that's that's definitely going to be a mistake. So I check, and he checks behind, and I was doing really badly on the turn. Uh, he flopped uh, straight, and then why he didn't shove... I mean, I understand why he didn't shove the river. He was afraid of uh, a full house, but that's just missing so much value on his part. So let's take a look at the next one, Pocket Kings. I raise against uh, blind on blind. Good flop for me, I bet. He calls, turn is a blank. I'm gonna continue being aggressive. I bet nine there, I can probably bet 10, although I don't mind nine. Uh, This is a bet that I would make, like if I picked up a flush draw, um, I would bet right around that. So I like it. He calls again. Uh, The river is a seven. I think his most likely hand is some kind of a one pair type hand here. Most likely queen. So against that, I'm going to uh, value bet. I don't see see him having a draw here. So maybe like queen or he might have had four or five. Maybe something like an ace five where he thought an ace would be good as well. Um, But maybe nines. I do end up value betting, and he ends up folding. So pre-flop I like, flop I like, turn I like, the river. Um, I do think I should bet there, um, but I would have to go through and check what are his most likely holdings on the river uh, to determine what my bet size should be. A 10... This is kind of a loose open, and I'm trying to see why I made it. Not a very good table. I guess I'm targeting the player in uh, the cutoff, um, because this is definitely not a standard open for me. So I get called by the button. Drive flop. I check, and I kind of like that, because I can't take a lot of heat, but I have equity, and I don't want to get pushed off my equity. So like if I bet and I get raised... Um, I don't like it. And, uh, by checking here, I, I pot control. And this is a spot where I would check with a hand like ace queen, uh, or like with a hand like ace king, I'm probably going to be, uh, checking here. So he bets small and I end up calling and the turn is a six 
and I'm just going to uh, check call again and the river is a six of diamonds and I am just going to check again. So I ended up showing down my equity. I'm surprised he didn't bet the river. I think the river is a good spot for him to bluff. But um, let me go through and see. I do like check call on the flop. Um, just because I, I, I don't want to face difficult decisions um, with the second pair top kicker, and he could certainly make that make make my life quite difficult for me on the uh, on the flop turn and river. Um, he should probably continue betting here, just because I'm clearly not strong, and he should definitely bet the river. So he made it quite easy for me, and um, even though I checked. I my hand is kind of face up in terms of you know what it is, and he he definitely could have made my life much harder for me there. Pocket sevens. So min race pre flop. Here I'm just gonna fire to try to fold out. Um, something like. I'm debating whether, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just going to be betting this with, uh, with, you know, most of my range. So this is, this is going to be a one and done type thing. Um, obviously I'm going to be done now and I am going to be done. Uh, the problem is it, it does hit a lot of his range. So if he has a hand like King Queen or if he has any kind of Broadway, so I think he's going to continue with, um, what betting this does is if he has a hand like 8-9 or 9-10, which has equity against me, he's just going to end up folding it. But I'm, I'm, I'm not certain, um, what the, I'm not certain just how good of a bet, uh, this is against this kind of a player who's playing tight to begin with. Pocket twos. So this is a dream situation where I flop bottom set on a draw heavy board against a player who's playing 54-19. And I hope I bet quite big, and I do. And he ends up calling, and the turn is a queen. And I bet again, because I think that any ace is going to continue. Any queen, obviously, I'm just going to get all his money. And any uh, draw is just going to continue as well. So he calls again, and the reverse pretty good for me. I would like to see myself bet here because I think a queen is going to call, a flush is going to call a raise, and if he has an ace, he's going to just check behind. So I end up shoving, and he ends up folding. And I do like a shove here. I think against a player like that, playing 54-19, especially on that river, I should just go for maximum value. This one is fit all the categories, but I ended up back raising, so it's not that interesting. Let's look at pocket tens. Raise, call, I uh, flop, pretty good flop for me. Uh, a gut shot and uh, lots of hands that he can call with. I don't know why I check. I, well, I mean, I do know why I checked. It's it's kind of similar to the situation where I have equity. It's a drivey board, and I don't want to get pushed off my equity. Um, it A lot of this depends on the player. If the player is aggressive, then I think I like check calling. If the player is passive, then I like betting. He bets, and I end up check calling, and the turn is a six, and I'm going to check call again. And I back my way into a straight. And now I'm just going to lead it out. And he ends up calling. And he, um, yeah, he actually had a monster on the flop. I don't know how that would have gone down. I'm guessing I would have bet he would have raised. And it would have been tricky, especially uh, given how deep we are. But as you can see, I like pot controlling on a pretty drivey board with a good but not great hand. But as I'm looking at it now, yeah, I think it really depends on 
how good the player is. Not how good, but how how aggressive or passive. Um, against a passive player, this should just be a bet, bet, bet. Against a, a very aggressive player, I like the more passive line of uh, check call on the flop and uh, check call on the turn and then going from there. So I hope that process is helpful. I think those are the hands that probably give people the most trouble with is the single race pots where you end up playing a flop, a turn, and a river. So those are all the filters you need. And for cardrunners.com, this has been Vernier. Good luck at the tables.